Larry Doby, Brooklyn's got Jackie Robinson. Now the pitcher got scared, let Jackie walk. He stole second, third, and come home on the ball. Welcome back to the Kaufman Show. Jay and I, uh, I know, are very excited to speak with our next guest. I am. It's actually a great, great thrill for me personally. This is a huge honor. Um, She is the daughter of the most important person to ever play baseball. And I say that without any... uh, Without any exaggeration. He's not being facetious, that's no, for sure. No, not in the least. Uh, welcome to the show, Sharon Robinson. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. I was in um, San Miguel last week, and I had, there was a whole contingency of, of Canadians there. So Yeah, we like to get away in the wintertime. <laughs> they were so excited to uh, hear me speak, because I told them that uh, the Canadians had welcomed my parents with open, open arms. Well, it's it's actually interesting. I think it was almost about a year ago to the day that I met you on De Gaspé Street in Montreal. Oh yes, okay. And that was uh, a wonderful day when uh, it was a wonderful day. The U.S. government put up a plaque on the uh, the home that your mom and dad lived in when they yeah. came to Montreal. Right. It was uh, that was uh, a day f- for me at least. It was uh, a real window to the history of our town and and oh, isn't it nice? just how much. Uh, how much Montreal played a part. And I'm not saying, if anything, Montreal was lucky that Jackie was here. It's not the other way around. Well, it went both ways. They were lucky to have that that first year, um, you know, a place to to be, uh, just feel like they could be themselves and, and not have to have the fears and negativity all the time. Did your dad ever talk about facing any kind of racism in Montreal? No, he never did because he talked about um, facing it when they left Montreal and, and traveled, uh, particularly down south, um, or, or if, if, Penn, if Philadelphia can be considered down south. But <laughs> certainly, no, nothing in in Montreal. They they really had a wonderful friendship um, with the oh geez, now his name has skipped my mind. They were both in. Uh, uh, he was a journalist, Scott um, Sam Malton. Oh, I'm not familiar with him. No, Sam Malton and his wife were were uh, really good friends, and they did social things together as well as, you know, being supportive of my parents being in Montreal. And he covered. He's the one that wrote the article um, when when they lifted my father up on uh, when they when the team won the championship. And he said his first time he'd, he'd seen a, a white mob run after a black man and to lift him up in in celebration. It was uh, out of love and not out of lynching, I believe, exactly. is what he wrote. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's it's amazing what a uh, what a tie your dad has on this town, it, and for well, having spent maybe six six we, months we love here, coming up there and love knowing that uh, Montreal specifically and Canadians in general were. Uh, you know, supported the integration of baseball. Uh, I want to talk a bit about the integration of baseball and okay. and the the larger scale of it and what it has meant to America since. Mm-hmm. It's been forty years since your dad passed away. Yes. And I'd like you to comment a bit on the developments for the African American in the United States since in the in the last forty years. Uh, it, it is in African Americans in general. It, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Well, certainly, um, you know, my father passed away 40 years ago, and at that point, um, he was really working on economic justice in America and and political uh, justice. So, um, you know, still, we had made quite a few strides in this country as African Americans, in America as African Americans, but there was a great deal of work to be done. And that continues to be the case 40 years later. Um, There's always work to be done, uh, a struggle such as this for racial justice or gender justice or religious, whatever is, it's an ongoing struggle. So no one expects that uh, things will be great um, just because you've gotten some laws passed. Because as we know, laws can be turned around and people's attitudes um, are a hard thing to to completely turn around. There's there's always uh, an issue with, with attitudes and behavior towards others that are different than you. 
So that being said, um, we, we, my mother and I um, were invited, we went to the White House this um, past week. So with uh, President and uh, the First Lady, President Obama and the First Lady. Were you at that wonderful concert last uh, last week? No, we missed a concert because I was just flying in from Mexico, but we attended um, the, they had groundbreaking for the African American Museum of History and Culture. And then the President and First Lady invited the group over to the White House for a reception afterwards. And so that just reminded us being in the White House and, and the sort of the beauty of seeing photographs of past presidents and mixed in, in that mix is a African American family um, was really a, a thrill for us. Um, and then to be able to meet, not we had met the president before, but to meet him in the White House and his in his territory um, was really, really thrilling. So my father, you know, if he, I just, of course, wished my father could have been alive to uh, have witnessed that moment, and I'm just very grateful that my mother, who turns 90 this year, was was alive for that for this big change in America. When um, when your father passed away, one of the last things that he was quoted as saying uh, at that World Series where he threw out the first pitch was how he, he longs for the day when there will be an African-American manager in baseball. Now, yeah, it was, Fr- Frank you know, Robinson, the playing of course, field was integrated, right. but we have to go beyond the playing field and all the way up to, you know, ownership, and, and management was the next step. Well, let's take it a step further. How do you think Jackie would have reacted knowing that there's a black president? Oh, he would be thrilled. He would be, um, you know, he would, it would just be... It was almost like the integration of baseball. I mean, it, it, many of the Negro leaguers of, during my father's time, they didn't believe that um, baseball would be integrated in their time. So he would be thrilled to have lived to see the day that we had the first African-American in um, American politics and American president. And so, um, you know, like I said, we were thrilled uh, just to be in the White House and to be a full witness to this change in America, that they had accepted um, an African-American man uh, as their leader. Um, so that's, it's quite remarkable and quite wonderful. You're listening to The Kaufman Show. Dave Kaufman and Jay Farrar. We're joined by Sharon Robinson. Jay? Hi, Sharon. Uh, Hi, Jay. How are you? Fine, thank you. Good. Uh, I was. Uh, you touched on uh, Dave's question. He, uh, he actually asked the question before I could. Uh, I'm good at that. Uh, yeah, he is. He, he scooped me on that. <laughs> I was actually going to ask a question um, regarding management in Major League Baseball. Yeah. Do, do you feel that there are enough African Americans or people of color in uh, high positions in Major League Baseball in I this day? I think it's an ongoing struggle, Jay. Um, um, we certainly made some strides, and we kind of pass around the, the three man- African American managers that have been in baseball since Frank Frank Robinson um, first came in in the 70s but um, it's it's um, we still have a lot of work to do and we see a decrease in on all levels of african-american participation in the game and we're working very hard with youth baseball to turn that around uh, we've got some really great programs the commissioner has some really great programs uh, and some institutes now in urban areas that do attract African Americans. But it's um, it's been a struggle. There's just so many forces uh, fighting for the same amount of, same attention from kids and from uh, teenagers. And so it's um, not just baseball that's struggling with it, but, uh, you know, all sort of all sports and all entertainment have to struggle. Um, so we've seen a decrease down to less than 10% African American participation in the game in general. So that certainly means we we don't have enough managers, we don't have enough African American players, and we are trying to turn around it, uh, the picture by working with young people. But it has to extend all the way up, and and have uh, more more African Americans brought into the game and and brought up to the majors through the minor league ranks and uh, in t- right on up to management, and we need some in ownership. and So it's an ongoing struggle. Is that a big part of your mandate with Major League Baseball right now? My personal mandate? Yeah. No, it's not. Actually, I do a character education program that's in schools all over the country, and I work uh, with our RBI program, which is one of our, our 
very strong urban initiatives um, getting African Americans and and Hispanics into the game of baseball um, from the urban areas. Um, you know, we we also have baseball academies, and I do um, a, a very limited amount of work with the baseball academies, but they're they're strong and and growing in number and also in the number of kids they're serving. So there's, uh, like I said, there's a lot of initiatives for young people that come out of the commissioner's office. We're, uh, we're wrapping up with Sharon Robinson. And uh, before we let you go, I was wondering if you would mind telling our listeners the story of uh, being at the I Have a Dream speech. <laughs> um, my father, my fa- my, when my father retired from Major League Baseball, I was about six years old. And for a while, he was, um, in addition to being with Chalk Full of Nuts, he was traveling the country raising money for um, the NAACP and also going on marches as the civil rights movement started really heating up, going on marches and going down when there was trouble, being one of the first ones willing to go down and sort of help motivate, motivate the community and show that there, you know, we cared what, what was happening in the South and, in, and across America to change laws that kept African Americans, um, n- didn't allow African Americans to be full full Americans and full participants in our society. Um, so, But it was always him going out and my, my brothers and I and my mother and my grandmother were sort of watching on television and hearing stories when he would come back. And so after, at a certain point, my father said to the family over dinner that he wanted us to all have careers that we loved, but it was also important that we, uh, as a family, continue to work towards social change. And so he and my mother started um, having, bringing my brothers and I into uh, their activities with the civil rights movement. And, and we also started having jazz concerts at our home to raise money. Um, so our first concert came after the March on Washington, and it was for Dr. King and to get the jailed civil rights workers um, bond money. But um, our first family activity was to attend the March on Washington. Uh, It was a very hot day, and my brother David, my mother and father, and myself uh, went down to Washington to be part of this enormous crowd and this momentous occasion uh, and to hear Dr. King speak. And it was um, quite quite thrilling and certainly something I will never forget. but it was also very hot, so I fainted on that day, so I missed part of it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you meet him afterwards? I, You know what? I don't remember meeting him afterwards. I remember meeting him when he came to our home uh, shortly afterwards when we had a jazz concert for him. So half of my memories of that day were blurred out by the fact that I was in the the health, health uh, tent. <laughs> oh, goodness. But you, did, but you did get to – Martin Luther King was in your home. Yes, he was in our home. It that's, was a uh, that's pretty very amazing day, and uh, it was it was special because we each had a role. I mean, it was it, my my brothers and I had a role uh, as well as my parents. So we really, when when they handed over the money to Dr. King, you know, we felt like we had helped to raise that money as well, and it brought us into a lifelong um, investment in social change in this in in America. We want to thank you for uh, for making that investment, Sharon. It's uh, yes. it's such a pleasure you know, I, to speak with you. I just have to tell you and, one yeah. more thing. My, my, we talked about my father being um, dying 40 years ago, but yeah. it's also an anniversary, almost an anniversary for the Jackie Robinson Foundation, which my mother started shortly after my dad died. And we now have you know, about 250 scholars, Jackie Robinson scholars all over the country, and they... Um, we, we're bringing them into New York very soon for our uh, leadership weekend, um, and they spend four or five days with us in New York, and they have everything from mentoring to going to plays and cultural activities and museums. And and then on Monday night, we have our annual um, black tie dinner where they take their networking to the next level. So it's a um, program that's very successful, and my uh, our, our biggest – um, success is that 97% of our students graduate from college. Hmm, that's amazing. Wow, what a number. That's uh, it's, a, it's a great number yeah. and a real testament to my mother. You know, these, it's the Jackie Robinson Foundation, but my mother, it could be the Rachel Robinson Foundation because it is something that she started and has stayed with. And she's turning 90 this year, but she still 
goes in the office uh, two days a week and is on daily basis involved in the uh, the um, the foundation. The letter that you read on your mother's behalf last year on Degas Bay Street was, uh, I think it took all our breaths away on that snowy day. <laughs> and uh, we want to thank you so much for everything that you do uh, for social change and for justice. And, uh, and really, thank you for your time today. This was such an honor to speak with you. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Yes, yes, Jackie hit that ball.